Hello friends, welcome to my channel Truth and Beliefs. I have been talking about the rights of women in Islam in the last two videos. Today while continuing to do the same. In Islam, marriage is not seen as a sacred covenant but as a mutual beneficial contract is on mutually uh, uh, contract between a man and woman. The stress is on mutually beneficial men and women were created to provide solace for one another. In marriage, women have the right to choose her own husband. She is free to require her, her husband to be to sign a prenuptial agreement the prenuptials not only includes any money she will receive in the event of a divorce but also contains any islamic rights she wishes to enforce for herself the right to a divorce, the right to keep custody of her children if there is divorce, the right to continue her education, the right to work, the right to wear a head covering or not to wear a head covering, the right to be the one and the only wife forbidding her husband to take any other wife while he is married to her or whatever other issue most concern her. In Arabia, before the advent of Islam in the 7th century CE, variety of different marriage practice existed. existed. The most common and recognized types of marriage at this time consisted of marriage by agreement, marriage by mahar, marriage by inheritance, and mocha or temporary marriage. In Mesopotamia, marriage were generally monogamous, except among royalty who would have harms consisting of wives and concubines. According to Islamic sources, most women in the pre-7th century Arabia had little control over their marriage. They were rarely bound by contract for marriage or custody of children and their consent was rarely sought. Women were seldom allowed to divorce their husband and their view was not regarded for either a marriage or divorce. However, in the transitional age uh, from non-Islamic to Islamic society, allied women could divorce and remarry without stigma. They were given power to negotiate the terms of their marriage contract and could even initiate divorce. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had reformed the laws and procedures of the common marriage practice that existed during his prophethood. The rules of marriage by agreement, marriage through concern, was reformed and a strict set of rules and regulations were put in place. The practices of marriage by inheritance and mutah marriage was forbidden. It's a haram in Islam. Several chapters and verses from the Quran were revealed which banned such practices. A marriage should be conducted through a contract and a mandatory sum of wealth provided 
to the bride which here refers to the meher once a meher has been ascertained with the realization that it is an obligation of a Muslim husband. The groom is required to pay it to the bride at the time of marriage unless he had his bride can mutually agree to delay the time of some of its payment. Rubia Mehndi published an article in which the culture of Meher among Muslims was thoroughly reviewed. There is no concept of dowry as such in Islam. A dowry as such is a payment of the, uh, to the groom from the bride's family and is not an Islamic custom. Bride prizes are also expressly prohibited. As per uh, Holy Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse uh, uh, 230. If he divorces her finally, she is no longer allowed to remarry him until she marries another husband. Then if the latter divorces her, it is not wrong from them to return to each other if they think that they can observe God's limit. These are the bounds set by God which makes clear to people who have knowledge. That is, after she has been divorced by the second husband, if they think they can maintain a healthy marital relationship. This honorable ayah abrogated the previous practice in the beginning of Islam when the man had the right to take back his divorced wife even if he had divorced her hundred times. As long as she was still in her idda the waiting period. This situation was harmful for the wife and this is why Allah made the divorce thrice. Where the husband is allowed to take back his wife after the first and the second divorce as long as, as, long as she is still in her idda. The divorce becomes Irrevo irrevocable after the third divorce as Allah said the divorce is twice after that either you retain her on reasonable terms or please her with release her with kindness if you divorce her once or twice you have the cho uh, choice to take her back as long as she is still in her idda, intending to be kind to her and to mend differences, otherwise await the end of her terms of idda when the divorce become final and let her go her own way in peace without committing any harms or injustice against her. Ali ibn Abu Talaha reported that ibn Abbas said, when the man divorces his wife twice, let him fear Allah. Regarding the third time, he should either keep her with him and treat her with kindness or let her go her own way with kindness. Without infringing upon any of her rights. Uh, Nika Halala, also known as Tahleel marriage, is a practice in which a woman after being divorced marries another man, consummates the marriage, gets divorced again in order to, to be able to remarry her former husband. 
nikah means marriage and halala means to make something halal or permissible this form of marriage is haram forbidden in a, a forbidden according to the hadith of islamic prophet muhammad peace be upon him the curse on the participants of tahleel or halala marriage the reason for the woman who was divorced thrice to marry another man must be that the man desired her and has the intentions of having an extended married life with her these are the legal goals and aims behind marriage if the reason behind the second marriage was to make the woman eligible for her ex husband again then this is the tahleel or halala that the hadith have cursed and the criticize in additions when the reasons behind this marriage if it was tahleel is announced in the contract it would make the contract invalid imam ahmad reported that abdullah bin masood said allah's messenger curse the one who does tahleel the one in whose favor it is done those who eat riba uzri and those who feed it in his mustadrak al hakim reported that nafi said a man came to ibn umar and asked him about a man who divorced his wife three times then his brother married her to make tahleel for his brother without the brother knowing this fact he then asked is she allowed for the first husband he said no unless it is marriage that involves desire we used to consider this an act of adultery during the times of allah's messenger it is not permissible to marry a woman if one's objective is to make her permissible for her first husband per classic islamic law there are hadith from that confirms that entering a tahleel or halala marriage with the intentions of divorcing so that the original spouses can be remarry is forbidden haram abu daud and ibn majah reported that both the first husband muhallil and the temporary husband muhallil lahu were cursed by god and ibn majah calls the temporary husband a borrowed billy goat al hakim nishapuri adds with that marriage should be based on genuine intention and that in the time of prophet muhammad peace be upon him tahleel spouses would have been considered adulterers okay guys thank you very much for watching my video i will continue my discussions on same topic women's right in islam in my next video i hope you like this video and you will find this video informative and useful